Once a week, I'm going to challenge you with a small and simple task. These tasks should take no more than 10 to 15 minutes. And the goal of these challenges is to help you learn not only Godot, but also problem solving. You can access the challenges in real time before I release the solution a week before in my Patreon, link is down below. This week's challenge was to create a simple 2D platformer movement with a jump and some gravity. So very simple, but hopefully you guys were able to do it. Welcome everyone to this solution. Um, the solution is pretty simple actually. Um, and the reason being, because if you actually go to the character body uh, 2D, so here's our scene by the way, <laughs> we have a character body 2D with a floor, pretty similar to last week's challenge. Um, if you haven't done that, you can totally check it out. Um, it'll be on my channel, obviously. Uh, but the basic idea to this solution is if we actually attach a script, we can actually use, um, I think I already have it, that's why, so let me delete it. If I create a new character, it'll use a template, character body 2D, and I can attach this, create, and this is our script, this is our solution. Now, obviously that's not gonna be it for this video, otherwise it's kind of a waste of time. So let me explain what this is, and then we'll go through the basic idea of how a platformer works. So here we have, uh, a floor. Imagine we have a floor, okay? And this is our player or our ball. Now, generally, if we want to add gravity, all we do is we make the downwards, which in Godot is actually positive. So it's kind of weird in Godot because if we zoom out here, you can see over here on the left, it says negative 250. And over here, it says 250. So the downwards is actually positive. So it's a little weird because usually the y-axis would go negative on the downwards, but it's opposite in Godot. So here, if we wanna go down on the axis, we would have to add to the y value. In our case, we'll add to the velocity instead of the position. Now the difference is generally just in the wording. So position is position. And velocity it has things like acceleration, uh, velocity itself, right? So movement of displacement, stuff like that. Um, now that's pretty much the y-axis, that's gravity. Now, if we wanna jump, what we would do is instead of adding to our velocity, we can actually just set our y velocity to a big number. So like 400, which you'll see that we do in a second. Now the movement on the right and left is pretty simple. All we have to do is take our velocity and add to it on the y, right? So let's take a look at how we did that in the code or how Godot gave us that code. So the first part is the gravity. So it says add the gravity. Now the check is to see, is a built-in function is on floor. It will return if we're on the floor or not. Now, if we're not on the floor, meaning we're in the air, then we'll add gravity. Now, how do we do that? We get this gravity, which is just a number, right? So in fact, we can actually print this. I believe it's around 100, but I might be wrong. Okay, it's a lot more than 100, it's 980, um, right? But it's a built-in number from Godot. Uh, and then we multiply it by delta. And now delta is a small number, so this ends up being um, maybe around 100 or something like that, right? So we're adding to the velocity y every few seconds kind of after we are not on the floor. Actually, not every few seconds, it's, it's like, I think about 100 times per second, something like that. Now this will handle the jump. Now when I am on the floor and I press UI accept, which is, I think, spacebar or enter on uh, Mac and Windows by default, you can just test it out. Uh, I'm pretty sure spacebar works, we can actually test it. Yeah, so spacebar works. Then we'll just set the jump velocity or the velocity Y to jump velocity, which is negative 400. Right, so negative 400 would be upwards because uh, the negative is on the top. Right, so that's the jump and the gravity. Now the movement is a little weird because the direction, we're not actually getting input, we're actually using this function called get axis, which is really useful because it's just gonna take these two values and compare them. So if I click my left UI, which is a left button, then it will return me negative one. Right, so if I print, uh, direction. Oh, I can't seem to type today. There we go. By default, it'll print me zero, but if I press left, you'll see it print negative one. If I press right, you'll press or print one, right? So now if direction is valid, I'll just take that direction. So negative one or one, and then multiply it by speed. So if it's negative one, that means I'm gonna go to the left. Now this will basically slow me down. This will take my current velocity and take it to zero at a rate of speed, right? So if I look at this function, you can kind of read what it does, 
right? And then we just add move and slide. This allows our velocity to actually work. If we didn't have this, this wouldn't work. So if I do this, you can see my, he doesn't even move anymore, right? This just allows velocity to actually work inside of my character. So that's pretty much it. Um, it's a pretty simple challenge this week. You know, I didn't want it to be too difficult. I think the first challenge was a bit more difficult um, in terms of actually using Godot, uh, but this one was pretty nice and simple. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this challenge, definitely check out my Patreon down below. Uh, I'll be putting a, a new challenge every Sunday, uh, hopefully for the next few weeks at least. I want to see how this does and how much engagement I get from you guys. So um, definitely check it out. Um, the solution to the next one will be posted next week, whereas the challenge for this week for the solution for next week will be posted this week. So uh, go check it out. Uh, the link of my Patreon will be down below and I will see you guys next week or in the future.